On November 18th, 2012, the Wii U launched, and this was supposed to be Nintendo's next latest and greatest console. I mean, the controller literally had a screen on it. It was so innovative. I mean, this console was launching with a new 2D Mario game and a sequel to Wii Sports, which was arguably the game that sold people on buying a Wii. It was looking like Nintendo had this next generation of consoles in the bag, until people actually got their hands on it and realized how bad it was, and, um... Uh, on March 27th, 2023, Nintendo shut down all Wii Shop capabilities for the Wii U and 3DS. But recently, they've also come out to say that on April 8th, 2024, at 4 p.m. PDT, whatever the fuck that time zone is, they're also going to be shutting down all online capabilities for both of these systems as well. That's why in this video, before it goes, I want to talk about why the Wii U was, in my opinion, the most slept on console of all time. In spring of 2023, uh, I started watching this guy, his name is Phoenix Resale. Now what Phoenix Resale does is he'll go into different retro game stores or different pawn shops or maybe even some conventions and he'll look for underpriced retro video games to flip for profit. And he's got a couple series where he builds whole entire game collections based on profit of the games that he's getting to flip. And this kind of got me into the idea of collecting some of these games myself. So I started to collect for the systems that I already actually had at the time, such as the Wii and the Switch, and now growing up, I didn't really have a ton of, like, uh, game money, if that makes sense, um, basically, my game collections for these consoles that, mind you, have some of the best games of all time on them, I didn't really get to experience, I was playing Wreck-It Ralph on the 3DS, dude. So being able to go back and play some of these games, you know, relive them whenever I probably should have already played them, uh, was awesome, despite me now growing up a little bit and being, like, too old or this being something childish to do. But one system that I didn't have that I really did want was a Wii U. So whenever I found out that one of my friends had an old Wii U that he hasn't used in a long time, that day, I became the 13,560,001th person to ever buy a Wii U. Now whenever I got my Wii U, I got Super Mario 3D World world and both the HD Zelda remakes, arguably the three best games that you could possibly get on the Wii, and of course, I absolutely loved what I played. But the more and more I looked into the history of the Wii U and what kind of games are on it, the more and more I realized how amazing this console was and how important it was for inspiring the Nintendo Switch. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the games on this console. I feel like there is an amazing plethora of first-party Nintendo games that not a lot of people are talking about. Now the first game I want to talk about is Super Mario 3D World, a sequel to Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS, but if you squint, they're basically the same game. Now in retrospect, looking back on this game, it's great, okay? It's a simple, you know, course clear 3D Mario game and it gets the job done for a fun adventure experience. The problem with it is that this game really needed to be the game that sold people on the Wii U, and I mean, come on man, there's Super Mario games galaxy on the Wii, and then there's there's 3D World, which is basically a game that you could play on your 3DS on the Wii U. Now, people really didn't like it for that reason back then, but now that we're kind of past the Wii U generation and sales on it don't really matter, the game's great, and I would genuinely recommend that you go and play it, especially on the Switch, because that Bowser's Fury is so fucking good, dude. Oh my god. Yoshi's Woolly World is a simple 2D platformer that came out for the Wii U that's probably, honestly, my my favorite 2D platformer to date. And I'm not really a big fan of 2D platformers. I feel like a lot of them can be very boring or repetitive or, you know, just kind of samey in their design. But something about Yoshi Woolly World's aesthetic and just its simple design, yet really complex difficulty, made it really fun to chip away at for a little over a week. One thing I want to mention about a lot of these Wii U games is that a lot of them are either the first in a new series that Nintendo has made or have been directly ported to the Switch because of how good these games are. Now, Mario Maker was really the first of its kind. I mean, I remember back in the day, some of the YouTubers I would watch would talk about how they literally bought a Wii U just so that way they could play Mario Maker. Now, Mario Maker 1 was very similar to uh, Mario Maker 2, but it did have its own unique features that didn't come to Mario Maker 2, such as the, like, 100 live death run mode or whatever the fuck it's called. Now, I could continue to talk about how games like Splatoon, Mario Kart 8, and others were definitely stepping stones to some of the Switch's most popular games to date, but uh, I think you get the point. Another amazing feature that the Wii U generation of Nintendo consoles brought was Amiibo, and I mean, these were so creative, they're fucking amazing, dude, I love them. Now, what these were 
were, were basically just little Nintendo character action figures uh, with little NFC chips in them. And what you could do is go into select Nintendo games and scan them into the game, literally, scan the thing that you bought in real life into the game, which is still so cool, and you could unlock certain things about the game with these characters. And I mean, it really is basically just a way for Nintendo to make more money off of you off of a game that you did already buy, but uh, at least the Zelda one is a fucking bad bitch. This is obviously Nintendo just trying to capitalize off that whole toys to life craze that was happening at that time. You guys remember Skylanders and Lego Dimensions? Oh my fucking god, I loved Lego Dimensions. But the thing that separated Amiibo from your standard toys to life action figure was that Amiibo were very, very high quality characters, and you could use them in a plethora of Nintendo. Nintendo games for so many creative different reasons. I think that a lot of people, whenever they see maybe a new Zelda game release or whatever, they might get the amiibo with it and not think much of it if they see, you know, an amiibo out in the wild or something. But to me, amiibo represents a time where Nintendo wasn't afraid to experiment, where they weren't afraid to just make games on the same four fucking IPs. Please, Nintendo, give us a new fucking game from any IP. Please. The Wii U was a virtual and retro game console machine. For those of you who don't know, uh, back whenever Nintendo wasn't as much of a stingy fuck of a company, you used to be able to go on this little platform called the Nintendo eShop on the 3DS and Wii U and buy old retro games. I mean, you could buy stuff like GameCube, NES, SNES games, all for like around 10-ish bucks and just have them on your Wii U to play whenever. You didn't have to buy an online service to be able to play these games that are coming out at a dog shit rate. It was also backwards compatible with the Wii, and basically that just meant that you can now play Wii games in the best quality possible on HDMI. And I mean, that's one of my favorite features about the Wii U. I mean, there's just so many generations of games that you can play on this thing, and that's why I always keep mine plugged in. I probably keep my Wii U plugged in more than my Switch, just because of the fact that I can play GameCube, Wii, or Wii U games, or even some virtual console games on there. Now, I didn't make this video to try to get you to buy a Wii U. I don't give a fuck. I just want people to know that just because I sold more lemonade at a lemonade stand whenever I was 8 years old uh, than Nintendo did Wii U's does not mean that the Wii U was a bad console. And I feel like it very much inspired a lot of the features and a lot of the best things from the Switch today. You guys know the drill. I'm fucking terrible at outros. I don't know what to say.